In this video, I'd like to give you a brief overview of the many topics that are covered by the science of acoustics. And the picture that I'm displaying now is a very classical picture in acoustics. It has been originally designed by Lindsay and then taken over by Alan Pierce in his uh, acoustics uh, textbook and I will not comment it but I invite you to take a look at it. At the center you have the uh, fundamental physical acoustics uh, principle and on the outer uh, circle you see all the different areas of engineering, uh, science uh, and disciplines in general where sound plays a role from oceanography to psychology, music and, and so many other topics within between the different uh, uh, disciplines of uh, acoustics. So I invite you to take a look at it just to get a flavor of uh, the wide range of disciplines in which uh, acoustics is, is present. Um, to be a little bit more structured, um, I will now make a comment about the different categories that appear in uh, the most widely distributed uh, red uh, journal in the science of acoustics. It's the Journal of the Acoustical Society of America and it divides the articles in a set of uh, categories. Some categories are based uh, on the underlying uh, physics of or technique and I will talk about linear versus nonlinear acoustics of structural acoustics or what I usually call vibro uh, acoustics and its counterpart aero uh, acoustics and I will also use this opportunity to discuss about infrasounds, sounds, ultrasounds and hypersounds. Um, that's the, the type, the categories on which I will uh, spend uh, the most uh, time. But you have also, and there I will just touch uh, upon these categories, discuss some uh, categories based on their ultimate application. You have architectural acoustic, music and musical instruments, uh, noise, its effects and control, which is mainly about measurements, on-site measurements, norms, standards and things like that. Underwater acoustics, then categories related to life sciences, uh, physiological acoustics, speech, uh, psychological acoustics or what we now call psychoacoustics, uh, bioacoustics and finally some transverse categories like transduction, acoustical measurements and acoustical uh, signal processing. Let's look at the two first categories, linear and nonlinear acoustics. So a quick reminder about what uh, linearity means. When we say that a physical phenomenon is linear, we mean that if we have two sources, A and B, and if the source A produces at some point a pressure PA, and the source B produce a sound PB, well, we have two properties. The first one is that if B gives a pressure PB, if we double the source, we double the effect. Um, and the second aspect is a, a superposition principle that if the two sources A and B uh, act together, the resulting pressure would just be PA plus PB with no non-linear terms like PA square or PA times PB. So um, more generally, if you combine K times the source A plus M times the source B, the result will be K times PA plus M times uh, PB. The immense majority of the acoustic phenomena are uh, linear. Nevertheless, there are some important phenomena that are non-linear in acoustics. Uh, I would say that occurs in three circumstances. The first one is when the sound level is extremely high, um, like for instance when you use high power ultrasounds or where the sound level approaches 150 dB and more. The second case is when the source amplitude depends 
itself on the uh, induced acoustic, acoustic field. So there is a feedback from the sound field on the sound source. And that's typically the case of combustion uh, noise and finally, the third case of nonlinearity in acoustics is when the propagation of the sound wave um, uh, in the media changes the nature of the media itself, and that would be the case when you do uh, acoustic cavitation, uh, for instance. Um, I will not dwell upon nonlinear acoustics, that's outside the scope of the course, but on the website I recommend some videos that you uh, might want to look at, like for instance uh, acoustic levitation, uh, sonoluminescence, uh, and other similar uh, topics. Linear versus nonlinear is an important distinction in acoustics. Another one is based on the frequency range of the uh, sound waves or sound signals that we're considering. And traditionally, um, we are dividing the, the entire frequency range of acoustic phenomena in four ranges. Uh, we first have the sounds, the sounds that we are, we humans are able to to, to hear. Uh, th this is a very uh, anthropocentric definition because other animals and you know devices like microphones definitely can record uh, a, a wider range. But still, we define sounds as all the uh, acoustic signals with uh, frequency components within 20 and 20,000 hertz. You sometimes will see 16 hertz, 16 kilohertz, or a mixture of both, but let's remember, let's say 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, even if these ranges change from subject to subject, and also changes with uh, time. Uh, below the sounds, we have the range of the infra sounds, uh, which are below 20 hertz, and that are not completely unaudible by humans, but simply our hearing threshold is very high, so we need the infrasounds to be extremely high to be perceived by our ear, but they are sometimes perceived by our entire body. We have internal organs, internal cavities that starts to resonate with infrasounds, so we are indeed sensitive to high-level infrasounds. And then above uh, 16 or 20 kilohertz, we have the range of ultra sounds, which is also traditionally divided in two. We have, let's say, low frequency ultra sounds that are in the range of some tens of kilohertz, so 20, 30, 50, 100 kilohertz, and high frequency ultra sounds that are in the megahertz uh, range. And then, you know, just for the sake of uh, completeness, uh, we have hypersounds that are very exotic uh, physical objects um, that are, uh, let's say, vibrations or propagation of sound waves at frequencies uh, higher than one gigahertz, so one billion, uh, billions of, of hertz. Um, now, we hear sounds from 20, from 20 kilohertz, roughly, but in fact, we only use a fraction of that for, our, for music, for communication um, uh, in, in the speech range. And a good idea to visualize that is to uh, look at a piano keyboard. If you take the, uh, the lowest uh, A note that you can play on the keyboard, the fundamental frequency is around 27 hertz, which is already very low uh, a very low frequency sound, and so we couldn't hear much lower if we, we added an octave to the keyboard, we probably wouldn't be able to hear uh, the lower A, which would then be at 13, 14 uh, hertz. And if you go to the other side of the keyboard, on the right hand side, um, there you have a C uh, note at over 4,000 uh, 4, uh, hertz, which is already uh, extremely high in frequency uh, and, and we usually don't go much higher uh, in, in, in music and certainly not in, in speech. So I have explained that acoustics can be linear or non-linear, it may be low frequency or high frequency, but then it can also be induced by either vibrations or a complex flow. 
In vibroacoustics, we are interested in understanding sound waves created by vibrating structures. If you think of a drum, for instance, when you hit the drum membrane with your stick, uh, you create vibrations in the membrane and these vibrations are communicated to the air and create uh, sound waves. Uh, another example would be an internal combustion engine where the explosion inside the cylinder is causing a global vibration of the structure of the engine which also communicates its vibration to air uh, and therefore creates sound waves. So many phenomena interesting to acoustical engineers are vibroacoustics based. But more and more you have issues that are not caused by vibration but caused by a complex flow. It can be a turbulent flow or it can be a laminar flow. For instance, if you think of a wind turbine, the movement of the blade in the air is causing turbulence at the trailing edge and this turbulence is a pressure fluctuation uh, inside the, the acoustic fluid itself which creates also sound waves and uh, therefore can be perceived at uh, a certain distance as, as a sound. Uh, but it can be a laminar flow, even if you have a laminar flow in a fan, for instance, in a cooling fan, the simple fact that the fan is spinning is actually causing in our own reference frame a varying pressure source and the pressure distribution on the, on the spinning blade is also causing a sound. So when you analyze uh, an acoustic source you always have to uh, try to understand whether it's related to vibroacoustics, to vibrations causing noise or to aeroacoustic where it is a flow uh, causing noise.